Welcome to Metrics That Matter. We will learn how to make sense of your fundraising data to make better decisions and raise more money with less effort. Brought to you by fundraisingreportcard.com, a simple and free analytics and reporting tool for nonprofit pros. Now measuring is easier than ever with fundraisingreportcard.com. It's here, Zach. Final episode of season one. You know, and at this point, Tim, I was thinking maybe we could come up with like a theme song or something for the beginning of all of our, our shows. Well, there, there's already music. I mean, yeah, but like we could extend it like D to the A to the T. Can you guess the next letter? Dad, Listen uh, to the whole podcast yeah. and we'll share at the end. That uh, is a terrible D-A-T-A, hook. D-A-T-A, yeah. yeah. Data. Yeah. I don't know about that. It might not be... We joked one, one about listener. Ideas. We yeah. joked about listener retention rate. Maybe like three episodes ago, we just lost all of all, all listeners. Right there, you it's know? done. Um, yeah, it's this done. is what happens when we record on Fridays, man. We we do that a lot these days. Yeah, it's and the quality day. of the show, I think, gets progressively worse. <laughs> Sorry to. Okay, all right. What are we talking about today? So this Tim? is if you've been following along. I have not been following along. <laughs> uh, now at chapter six of the book in this episode of the season, because the book is ending and we'll be back. I don't think there will be really any delay for season two. <laughs> season two will be listener feedback, uh, questions, and we're going to figure out exactly what uh, it becomes after this. But uh, this is uh, just, you know, wrapping up the baseline of core understandings and metrics before we dive into to what's what's next. So today in the, in the, the book is... Applying concepts with direct mail metrics. So wow, wow, that sounds yeah. heavy. That's that's heavy. <laughs> We're dealing with the postal service now. It's a whole another ball of wax. <laughs> <laughs> we should have a whole episode dedicated to how to run an unprofitable business entity focused on. The Postal Service. But nonetheless, no, yeah. I think today we're really going to dive into all the information that we've covered over the past five episodes mm-hmm. and how you can actually start to apply that with some real world examples. And I'm really glad that we're actually recording today, Tim, because the other day I was on the phone with someone, fundraising report card user, and we're talking about calculating lifetime value. And this is a pretty robust organization, but they've got all their direct mail acquisition costs. They've been tracking that for years. And they've got it all broken down by segments. And these are phone calls and screen shares. So it's like a virtual high five between me and this man. But it's awesome to know that they're going to be able to apply these concepts. And that's essentially what we're going to talk about today is, okay, all these concepts we've talked about, let's apply them to one of the most common forms of solicitation out there, direct mail. So the first thing, we'll be doing a bit of recapping from prior episodes. Yep. First thing I just want to make sure people remember is the whole culture and infrastructure for data-driven metrics and why that's important and baby steps to, to change your culture. And I don't know if you want to dive into a little bit of that. The person I was talking to yesterday, that's a perfect example of an organization that has that culture in place. Now, from having talked with, his name's Terry, having talked with Terry, he would tell you that it's really only a few people that have this data-driven culture. But the fact that the organization has for years been keeping track of donor acquisition costs from their direct mail vendor. Now, in their case, they're using an outside vendor, so they required that they report back their acquisition costs. So that's, that's one way to kind of make sure that that happens. But that's a perfect example of an organization, whether they knew it or not, that has a culture that supports measuring some metrics. Now that Terry's working more closely with me, he's able to get you know some of the lifetime values and, and things like that. But you need some of that information, or at least you need to be keeping track of the, the input metrics to calculate that information, or else you know we got to start at ground zero, which is building out the process to collect that type of data. So it's really important as we you know it's season one, season two. Hopefully we make it you know to season twenty eight. This is going to be a recurring theme. We've got to collect information in a standardized way so that we can then analyze it and take next steps with it. Terry and his organization, I hope you listen to this, Terry, that is an organization, whether they know it or not, that has that culture in place so that we can actually analyze and uh, identify if things are working well. Cool. So the first question, direct mail, is who should you be mailing and spending your money to mail stuff to? So... I'm not the best in the world at trying to figure out segmentation. There's a couple, you know, rules of thumb that you can identify and follow. And this is the world of RFM. You know, you think about direct mail, you think about R, recency, F, frequency, and M, monetary value. Those are the historical ways to approach segmentation for direct mail appeals and things along those lines. There's people, and if you're listening to this and you are one of these people that have way more experience and expertise than me in this area, great. You know, leave a comment on the website and things like that or on the LinkedIn discussion. But you're going to want to look at 
different dollar amounts, so giving segments. Where have donors historically given? Can we segment based upon that to then have specific ask amounts and things like that in our mailings? And then also, can we segment by recency? You know, the folks that have not lapsed, the folks that have been retained, the folks that have reactivated. Those are some of the really basic ways to segment for direct mail. And then they also, if we're tracking that acquisition cost, we can then break that down by the lifetime value of that particular segment, which is, I hate to allude to it too much, but what we're going to get into. Okay. So the example for today's episode and in the book is a renewal campaign. So first off, for those that don't know, well, what? is a renewal campaign. So I think the idea of a renewal campaign, Tim, is going to be to keep donors around, right? We've got Mm -hmm. uh, a new group of people from last year. We've got our existing base from last year. 12 months uh, through the year, we want to make sure that in the next 12 months that they uh, renew that contribution to our organization. So not only first-time donors or reactivated donors or our already retained donors, this is simply looking at We've got a base of support that gave, let's say, in 2016. How are we going to get them to come back in 2017? Let's send them a direct mail appeal in 2017 to get them to uh, renew that contribution. Okay. So doing this campaign, there's three core components that you know you wrote about. Uh, first, having a question about something. You know, could be anything. You know, testing that something, recording and measuring the results of the test. So, can you walk us through what this is? So, these are the core components of evidence-based anything, <laughs> and obviously <laughs> pretty vague. But we're applying them here to our direct mail appeal, and that's the whole idea behind data-driven fundraising. In this case, or data-driven anything, is to be evidence-based. So, we have to have some sort of hypothesis. What are we going to test? So, in this case, we could be maybe segmenting our direct mail list. I guess our hypothesis could be. Will it be more profitable to renew first-time donors or our already existing repeat donors, something along those lines? The way that you would then test that is you would send out this appeal to the first-time donors, and you would also send this appeal out to the existing base of retained donors, and then you would measure the results. So then we would look at you know the, the giving trends amongst those two distinct groups over the next, ideally, years, so you could start mm-hmm. to look at lifetime value. But even if we just looked at the initial dollar amounts that were returned to us from that direct mail appeal, we could start to you know analyze we could see okay of the segment that was newly acquired only 25 percent gave and of that 25 percent we raised a thousand dollars but of the repeat donor segment that we sent to was 50 percent gave and we raised ten thousand dollars that's the type of approach that you want to take here is what's the hypothesis how are we going to test it? And then what are our metrics that we're going to measure to know if it was effective or not? And I know that's kind of easy to talk about in the abstract and a lot more challenging to actually do in reality. But that's the premise here. And that's the ideas. Probably your hypothesis is going to be what type of segmentation will work well. Then Your test is going to be segmenting those lists, so looking back through your donor database, pulling those different types of reports, providing that to your direct mail vendor, and then looking at the immediate returns over the next, you know, two to four week window of response rates. So in terms of, you know, getting that contribution back from those two distinct groups and then total funds raised from those two groups. Over the long run, you're going to want to look at the lifetime value of those two groups. But in the short term, we can start to get some idea of if our hypothesis was correct. Okay. So in this campaign, we're looking at the goal is, I think, to maximize the ROI. And we're going to be doing this on a tight budget of $2,500. I think that's a tight budget. It sounds pretty small. Sounds pretty small. To do this... Uh, first, you know, what segment should you send to to maximize your ROI and how do you figure that out? So this is going to come back to that RFM. And it's also really helpful if you have, you know, not to plug fundraising report card, but some baseline for some different segments. So for example, looking through your donor database and seeing, do we have a nice pool of retained donors? Do we have a nice pool of newly acquired donors? But I will always be the proponent of send something to your existing base. So if you've got a group of 500 supporters, 1,000 supporters that have renewed year over year, let's send that direct mail appeal to them. They've already shown an interest year over year in the organization. Let's try and get them to come back for that third year, continue that giving. And you could generally, because you you know, from analyzing hundreds of organizations' retention rates, retained donors retain at a higher rate than first-time donors do Mm -hmm. consistently. So, you know, if we are in a tight budget and we need to bring money into the organization, let's target our most loyal supporters. If the goal here is to maximize ROI, cool. Let's get our list of retained donors. Let's segment this appeal specifically for them. This episode is brought to you by us here at Market Smart and the Fundraising Report Card. What is the Fundraising Report Card? 
Well, it's a free service offered at fundraisingreportcard.com that enhances your fundraising efforts with easy to use analytics and charts. Get your proposals approved faster by using these beautiful and elegant charts created automatically with fundraisingreportcard.com. You'll also find a great blog that dives deep into what data means for your organization and how you can use it effectively to make smarter decisions. Start learning and start generating beautiful charts by going to fundraisingreportcard.com. Now back to Metrics That Matter. So you're doing your direct mail campaign. What metrics should you be looking at to see if it's working and see if it's effective? Yeah, so there's there's kind of two different perspectives you want to take when you're analyzing a direct mail campaign, both your short-term analysis and your long-term analysis. And the long-term is fun because we start to incorporate metrics like lifetime value, and we really get to compare that to the donor acquisition cost. Or, you know, since we're sending maybe a renewal campaign, we're not necessarily too concerned with acquisition costs. We're more concerned with just like overall expense associated with the segment of donors. So in the long term, you're really doing like that DAC to LTV comparison. And of course, in that long term perspective, you're also considering retention rates. So how we've engaged with this segment of donors has that boosted or decreased the rate at which they're retaining each year. But there's one other metric that in the short term, you're definitely going to want to take a look at because it's so kind of like prescient in that moment. You're going to want to look at average donation amounts. So the direct mail vendor that you're working with is probably going to return to you like, you know, response rates, total dollars raised, things along those lines. But you're going to want to look at average donation amounts as well. And you're going to want to compare that to that segment's kind of historical performance. So if you've loaded that, for example, this segment of donors data into fundraising report card, you can look at, okay, in 2016, the average donation amount for this group was $100. We sent out this direct mail appeal. What was the average donation amount from this particular appeal? Was it, you know, higher, lower, something? along those lines. So in the short term, look at those average donation amounts, look at response rates. Don't get too terribly hung up on the total dollars raised or things like that. You're also going to want to jot down donor acquisition costs or you know the expense associated with engaging with this constituent. And then over the long term, you can really start to look at, did that have an impact on retention rates? Does that boost lifetime value? How does that look when I compare LTV to DAC? Stuff like that. Okay. Something that we kind of skipped over is what metrics should you not be looking at? These vanity metrics that you may, you know, think, oh, I didn't do great because look at that metric. I'm, 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 look at me. I'm awesome. Yeah. So the, the scary thing is there's a lot of vanity metrics out there, more than you'd be uh, comfortable kind of identifying. So I'm not 100% sure which direction to take this. You really don't want to be focusing too terribly much on those total dollars raised. That's going to be an area where we could say we raised $150,000. Well, what if there's one big kind of anomaly in there? We also don't want to get too terribly hung up on the total number of new people that were acquired or anything along those lines. Direct mail vendors, in my experience, I've seen really like to tell you, this is how many people gave and we tapped into this whole new pool of people. And you really end up with some numbers and some metrics that you can for really lack of a better term, you can just overlook them because they're not meaningful. They're not really tapping into that level of engagement and the impact that has in the long run. Okay, Zach. So we've done our campaign. We've got some metrics that we're tracking. We've sent it to preliminary send, went to these different little batches, three different segments, newly acquired donors giving a thousand or less, retained donors giving a thousand or less, and reactivated donors giving a thousand or less. So we're basically looking at new people, retained people, reactivated people, who is you know the most valuable for your organization to engage with and send the big campaign to? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how do we figure out which segment is actually worth following up? So we're going to think about those short-term metrics. So really, we're going to focus in on that average donation amount. Now, again, we really want to be looking at this stuff from a long-term perspective. But since we do need to make a decision and we sent out three preliminary sends, we can look at those average donation amounts. Now, what's fun about my perspective, having worked with hundreds of organizations, is those retained donors generally give larger donation amounts than the other segments, the, the newly acquired folks and the reactivated folks. So anecdotally speaking here, you're probably going to identify that we want to really target our most loyal supporters that retains segment of donors but calculate the average donation amount from each and i'll also mention look at the response rates did we receive back from our preliminary send a significantly higher amount of response from one of the segments because then that could kind of trump even these average donation amounts you're going to want to look at both of them so you can get a a more clear sense but those would be the two metrics i'd I'd focus in on okay so in this example we've got the newly acquired people having 25 renewed donors from that the retained donors 
having 50 uh, renewed donors and the last group reactivated giving, 75 of those were renewed donors. And this was sent to 250 people in each list. Another data point uh, for this example is the newly acquired donors had a total donation of $1,500, mm-hmm. while the retained donors had total donations of 2500 And then the reactivated ones were as well $1,500 in total donation. So even with you just kind of mentioning all those numbers... The example that's laid out in the book is a good example of this, is that on the surface, okay, 25 donors and $1,500 from newly acquired. Those are the two low numbers, so we're probably not going to send to them. So then the question becomes, do we send to the retained donors or the reactivated donors? We obviously had a higher response rate from the reactivated donors. So immediately you're thinking, okay, go reactivated. But right. if we calculated that average donation amount, it's significantly smaller. The retained donor segment, in this hypothetical example, our response rate was higher amongst the reactivated donor segment. We are going to want to target the retained donor segment because it's more valuable. It's more profitable potentially for the organization. Yeah. Now, interestingly, between the 25 donations of the newly acquired donors, Mm -hmm. that's an average donation of $60. The fewest is actually the newly acquired with 25 donations, but 60 on average, then $50 for the retained donors, which, you know, I think that's a good combination of both quantity and Mm -hmm. that number being higher, as you were talking about. And it's the fun of, of a hypothetical example where we can, you know, fudge the numbers and make it 60 for acquired and 50 for uh, mm-hmm. the retained segment. But the idea here is to really look at those two, you know, what's our response rate? What's our average contribution? And then make an informed decision about where we're going to allocate the rest of our funds. Yeah. And as you go into later in this book, that for every X dollar you spend on this direct mail, you can expect based on your test, this amount of return. So it's a matter of looking at the money you're spending and what you expect to get back from that direct mail campaign as a result. It's fun when you can you know, have the luxury of running tests and things like that to get some perspective for what might happen when we mm-hmm. do add that other zero to our budget and go to a wider audience. But even if you don't have that luxury... Year over year, keep track of these numbers and be a little bit more informed 12 months from now, you know, when you're working on that next appeal. Yeah. So with that, how do we wrap this all up, the book up, the uh, season one? What key takeaways uh, before we move on to season two? Well, Tim, I thought you had prepared a uh, an end of season haiku. Wasn't that what that, we both... That is not something I'm equipped to do. Data. No. Is data two syllables? Date. Date. Data. 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 One syllable? Data? Data? I don't know. It seems like one. We'll, we'll do one so I have yeah. more words for my haiku. Okay. Data is awesome. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> this podcast yeah. is awesome? How about yeah. that? Maybe that's five yeah. syllables. Yeah. Five, seven, five. No. All right. Wrapping this up. Yeah. There's a ton of metrics out there. Vanity metrics is a really good concept to take away from this. Really, if, you, if you're going to take anything away from the first season here, the first six episodes, think back to that. I think it was the first or the second where we mm-hmm. start to go through kind of what the key metrics are in building that culture. Got to get the foundation in place. Got to start measuring something. It's not always going to be right at first. Start measuring something. Learn from that. Pivot you know, measure a new metric, build that culture internally, share this with others to help kind of foster that culture internally. And then as we start moving forward, you know, with being a data-driven organization, we're going to get into more in-depth examples. We're going to talk about how to build process to build quote-unquote data hygiene. You know, we're going to think through and, and share examples of what that actually looks like. But for now, let's start somewhere measure something think back to the first and second episodes of this podcast read the book and uh you know you're off to a good start it's good never doing haikus again never again <laughs> maybe we'll start season two with a haiku <laughs> we should mention uh yes yeah, send in your questions and feedback and we'd be happy to, to answer some questions on the podcast you can send that to tim at imarketsmart.com is really easy one to send it to that's me Send them to Tim. And also, if, if you subscribe to our blog or if you subscribe to the podcast, feel free to just reply to emails. Mm-hmm. They actually come to real human beings. We are real human beings, and we love uh, receiving that information. So definitely hit reply. Share your thoughts with us. We're even thinking of maybe doing guests on the show next year, yeah. next season. If you're a data-driven fundraiser, we would love to have you on the show. Exactly. We would also love any reviews you could write in the Apple Podcasts app, it's iTunes. That would be greatly appreciated. Preferably in haiku format as yeah, well. Yeah, that would be big bonus plus. That uh, works really well for the Apple search It rankings. does, yeah. <laughs> we'll read reviews on the show. 
especially if they're haikus, you know. So <laughs> maybe we could transition from uh, metrics that matter to like free verse storytelling or something like that. I mean, that, that could be fun, you know. Po- po- poetry would be fun. Too. We're definitely losing fun. subscribers at this yeah. point. I'm done talking to you. Yeah. It's been fun. It's Season fun. one. Season it's one. Woo! Season one's done. Yeah. Have okay. a good rest of your day, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Metrics That Matter. If you like the show, make sure to review it on Apple Podcasts and pass along to a colleague. Download the Metrics That Matter ebook at www.fundraisingreportcard.com/book. Thanks again for listening.